Hey guys, welcome to day two of week three, the recap that is. Uh, it's Gore, and it's Trelly, and we got Baskin, who is going to give us a, depending on depth, recap of <laughs> your set, depending on how much you can remember. Uh, Trelly, we're going to go to you first, though, because the first set of the day, 3-0, uh, and it is the Kings on the losing side once again, like yesterday, this yep. time to the Leviathans, uh, who get the dub. Unfortunately, we talked about the Kings coming into this week, and we were saying, you know, they're ramping up, they're looking real good. After an unfortunate loss to the Warriors, it seems like that may have taken a small hit, and then this time around, I was getting the same sort of vibes, right? They, they had decent early pressure, but they were never able to translate that into these massive gold leads. Uh, I wasn't loving some of the picks and bans, as far as I'm concerned, yeah. and a lot of it goes to like solo lane pressure was a big question mark for me as well where variety would have really good games and then sometimes he would just like get soloed over in right lane and then lose some pressure you if you lose your life and a blue buff and then like a wave under tower your lane is almost dead like that and that's just like that could happen at any given moment so uh, unfortunately consistency is still a big issue for the camelot kings and i know there was a lot like we, we had a really lengthy game too for them, but unable to, to convert that. And then game three, like... Very fast. Game three was much quicker yeah. and... Uh, One-sided. Yeah, those numbers will say a whole ton. The the, the right side of the map die. <laughs> and that was a lot. Uh, for the Leviathans, it looks great. I know we talked about it like on Waiting Room. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest conversation was just like, man, have to play the Warriors into the Leviathans. Like, what a hell week. And which I think you guys, the Ferrymen, like, I think it's, whether it's next week, sometime soon, like, you guys also have a week that's like very tough matchups. Yeah. Uh, I know in a couple weeks you play the Leviathans, and I know because I was writing the schedule before this. But Baskin, we're not looking to the future. We're looking uh, to the past and, and for when we're recording this, like, very recent past for you. Uh, so I'm kind of curious, like, from your perspective, like, how would you describe, like, game by game what, what had gone on in your set? Um, oh, we've played so long. Uh, it's, like, kind of hard to remember. The first two games... Um, were just Paul Bobby Yaga games. Yeah, it was the first two, right? Yep. Okay, yeah. You got and then that right. Banning it. I mean, it's, <laughs> I mean, sometimes games are kind of complicated, but I feel like in this case it's pretty simple. Paul, Paul got Bobby Yaga. Mm -hmm. It's over. Um, game three and game four. I think we were super far down, right? Correct. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Game three was the the Titan call. Yeah. That yep. One. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. So game three, we were really far down. Um, I think I died to a gank. Aurora died to a gank. I also think Cyclone died to a gank. So we all died to the gank. Um, Ravens are really good at snowballing leads, so um, they kind of just like I remember being like I, I remember we were super far down like really early I think yeah um, I'm trying to remember, but uh, that game went long because we I th I, even though we got behind early I think we did a good job of like uh, prolonging the game which is pretty important we got back to like an even game state and then right. um, uh, after that it was kind of just like it was really hectic in the yep. late game like like today was definitely like one of those days where the calls are just like. Everyone just calming and like especially in like these late game scenarios where they're sort of like it's not like your normal like 5v5 fire giant It's sort yeah. of like all over the place people are sort of pushing and stuff and then the end of the game three um, I think they like overkilled our Titan by maybe like 200 damage or something and I think we would have won the game if uh, Like it, like we were about to kill them all. Yeah, and then win the game. Yeah, for but, sure uh, Yeah, they they barely got enough damage on it. I think that scream uh, fire blinked it and that it, is like a thousand That is what it was. Yep yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And then game four um I'm trying to remember. Game four, we also got behind early as well, but I think we did a good job of bringing it back. Um, we had one good, really, uh, one really good FG call, like right when it was spawning. They got FG, we stalled out the game, and then we were all there on time when FG was spawning. We could just do it really quick with our comp, and then um, it was like they did a really good job of defending after that. But it was just we just close it out, I guess. Yeah, I remember. you've got the lead at that point, right? Yeah. So it was just kind of playing with that. Yeah, I think we got a Phoenix. I am kind of curious, like the comms at the end of game three, because like mm -hmm. we're out of my chair like jumping up and down when i see you guys because uh, i think trelly we see thor go forward because you, you're like well, haddix is just gonna dunk and then you got turnabog come in what happened was you you guys chased out you get yeah. the fire giant you get a quadra close to a penta scream also tight in the first time oh. mm -hmm. paul kills him because he has to <laughs> or the game's over and i'm like oh my god that's game and then you realize wait phoenixes are coming up but they're not quite up yet and I see Haddock stepping forward. And I'm like, okay, Haddock has enough time to ult in. I believe Ven's on Cherno, so he can also follow. But how can everyone get there? And then it was just an all-out brawl underneath the Titan. And unfortunately, yeah, the, the scorching blink was enough to confirm that that Titan kill. But it was very close to just full wipe. We end the game. How hectic were like the comms in that moment? Like, oh, in, so <laughs> it's, it's it's actually it's it's kind of interesting. Like, 
They, you guys should do like a graph of like the decibel level of calm <laughs> as the game goes on. Because like it's early game, you're like, oh, like uh, they could like Sino's calling like, oh yeah, uh, jungler could be left. You know, it's very very calm, very mm -hmm. civilized. Mm -hmm. but then by the time 50 minutes rolls around and they're trying to end in our tent, and it's people are screaming like <laughs> even the most basic like the basic comms like suitor blink, suitor blink. Like it, it's just every the the level is just like the volume level is just way up. And it's just super hectic. But yeah, I don't remember exactly what was said, but. Yeah, everyone was just screaming. Just screaming. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, it gave maybe the most exciting end that we've gotten to see in a game for, for a while, sure. despite the fact that unfortunately for y'all it was a loss. They got the they got the three one. Yeah, you got the three one. Yeah, the grand scheme, grand scheme, yeah. big picture. Yeah. I do want to ask though, because it feels like every game this will be the last one, and then the recap will be done. But I, you just seem to be un like unkillable most of the time, and so what is it like being a literal raid boss? <laughs> um. Well, I, I, I do remember being pretty hard to kill the Hurt game, but my team was also just super far ahead and yeah. always killing everyone. Um, the Hades game, I, I think I died twice. And the AMA games, I got I think I got pretty fed the AMA games if I remember quickly. So I was just running around. But yeah, I think uh, the Soul Lane build path right now is really good. Breastplate of Determination is broken as fuck. I mean, <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, we know. It's okay. <laughs> it's a very good item. So uh, I just feel like that allows like you to just play more aggressive. You could get away a lot with a lot more things than you would. Um, you, like before, I would build uh, Glad Shield first. And yeah. That's, uh, Forty prots. Yep. And two hundred HP. Uh, Breastplate is fifty-five prots and can be up to. I think like a hundred plus fizz and fifty six magical. Yeah, plus the, 20 the, moves. the the glyph is way too much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's just way <laughs> way more tankiness. It's cheaper too. I yep. mean, the glyph obviously makes it more expensive, but the actual tier one item is cheaper. So yeah, I think the build path is, is uh, really good right now. Oni Hunter's garb is really solid too. Yeah, and it just makes you. Uh, Unkillable. Yeah. The unkillable Baskin that we got to see. Well, hey, thanks both of you, Charlie Baskin, for hanging out and, and chatting with me about the, the, the games that we got to see. And thanks for y'all for watching. And make sure that you catch us live whenever we are, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, 11 a.m., twitch.tv slash nightgame. Make sure that you catch anything behind the scenes as well as content filmed uh, with the pros. Depending on where you're watching this, it might be where you're at, youtube.com slash smitepro. And if you miss any of the action, you can watch it at youtube.com slash smitevod. So thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.